Hello YouTube and welcome to Remy's Roguelike Rampage. Say that correctly. Five times fast. Go. Try it. Um, today, we are going to, and for a few episodes, we are going to try out Brogue or Be Rogue. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, but this is version 1.7.2. Um, it is not, it is mouse compatible, but I, uh, I'm not going to be using the mouse for very much, other than to show you specific areas of the screen. The, uh, I'm having trouble getting fraps to record just the window, so we're recording my whole entire screen, so I might do some cropping to try and fit it out, but otherwise you might see on the two sides, you can see my recycling bin down there probably, um, but uh, Brogue is a traditional uh, roguelike game, and it's a 26-level crawl, and you're trying to get to the Amulet of Yendor, uh, which is apparently on the 26th level, and then make it back through all the levels, I believe. Uh, it's by Brian Walker, uh, and you can reach him. Uh, I got all this information off the uh, Rogue Basin which is a pretty much like a wiki. And I'm going to be getting most of my games off that site, or not off that site, but the links are on that site. And so yeah, it's pretty much a wiki for all roguelike and things like that. The special thing about this one is it's very... Um, how should I put it? It's friendly to newbies, so here, I'll hit N for new game, and as you can see, we have a whole bunch of stuff already. Now, if you don't know what roguelikes are, roguelikes are typically dungeon crawlers. They are randomly generated, um, and most of the traditional roguelikes, actually, I think all traditional roguelikes have ASCII art, and this has a little bit better ASCII art. Um, as you can see, they're colored in. It's not just your typical characters. They have some color and uh, character to them, I guess. Uh, but if you can see down here, I am the at symbol. This is the player. It says up at the right, you, lit, health. This is the health bar, nutrition bar. My strength is 12, my armor is 3. And then these guys are stuff that I can see. The dungeon, exit, uh, and as you can see on the screen, it highlights it there which is right uh, below me. And I can see a monkey, which is a captive. Uh, and I guess I can go ahead and read some of the stuff. Uh, mischievous trickster, that is, uh, that it is, the monkey lives to steal shiny trinkets from passing adventurers. Uh, the monkey has a 63% chance to hit you, typically hits for 6% of your current health, and at worst could defeat you in 10 hits. The monkey is being held captive. The monkey can steal items. So, typical monkeys in the world try and steal stuff from you. However, this monkey is being held captive, so if you free him, he kind of becomes your familiar pet or uh, ally. Um, and then we see two kobolds guarding him. Uh, the kobold is a lizard-like humanoid of the upper dungeon. The kobold has a 50% chance to hit you, typically hits for 8% of your current health, and at worst can defeat you in 8 hits. You have a 100% chance to hit the kobold, typically hit for 42% of his of its current health, and at best could defeat it in two hits. And there are two of those. So, in most roguelikes, you move with the arrow keys or the number pad, if you have one, and, uh, or you can use the, like, Y-U-I, no, it's Y-U-H-K-N-M, I believe. Something like that, H, J, K, it's confusing, I don't like it, I prefer my number pad, so that's what we're going to use. Now, uh, it's a turn-based game, so nothing will happen until I move. But as soon as I move, everything else gets a turn. And the kobolds are, let's see, yeah, they're guarding, I don't think they see me yet, now they do. And there's a jackal, and I'll get to him in a second, I can attack diagonally. Um, 
The jackal prowls the caverns for intruders to rend with its powerful jaws. The jackal has a 44% chance to hit you, typically hits for 25% of your current health, and at worst could defeat you in 3 hits. You have a 100% chance to hit the jackal, typically for 37%, and at best 2 hits. The jackal moves quickly, which means it kind of gets 2 move turns per every one of your turn. Um, and as you can see, I'm already at 40 health. And... Boom. Everything in this room except the monkey is gone. Now, if I move into the monkey, it'll give me an option to free captive monkey. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes, because having an ally is good. And then we're going to go over to... Oh, there's another kobold. I should take him out. Um, I'm going to go over here and just hit five. Actually, I think we can... Uh... Let's see, what's rest? Is it R? No, R is uh, remove... Um, menu, what's, I have to click on it, okay, uh, Z, sleep, so Z is sleep until you're better, come on, you're not gonna let me sleep, what's going on, okay, yeah, I guess we're sleeping, it takes a while, oh, there we go, you have to hold it down, I gotcha, um, the last time I played this, it was not in this version, uh, so, yeah, oh, jackal's on us, and we died, so see, it's that easy to die in these games, and because I was holding it down, uh, turns happen rapidly. Um, but I can go ahead and hit space or whatever, killed by Jackal level 1, and those are my only two uh, other goes. Killed by Goblin Conjurer on level 3, burned to death on level 1, and killed by Jackal on level 3. Uh, those are apparently the high scores, I don't know... I uh, know we're not going to save recording. So we're going to hit new game again, and we're going to actually try to get somewhere. Um, there is also a phone, Android, and Apple port. I believe it's for Apple. I have an Android, so I don't really know. Um, these pluses are the red or doors. But there's a port to, uh, to phone systems, OS. And it's a lot simpler. I don't think it's updated as much. And that's the one I actually play the most. Because this is... It's a game that you can, you know, have fun with. Uh, and this is a staircase, the down staircase. But we're not going to go on that until we completely explore this place. Um, what else? So yeah, if you're looking for a roguelike... And I'll explain more... Oh, God. Bloodwort stock, bloodwort pod, and bloodwort pod. I forget if you can kill... Yeah, you can't kill those things. Um, and I'm not sure if the bloodwort is the one that heals you. One heals you, and one, like, releases gas that eats you. And we killed the jackal, apparently. But if you're looking for a pretty basic roguelike... Pretty easy to learn. Um, it can be as fast paced or as slow paced as you want it. This is a pretty good one. It is a more famous one in the world of roguelikes. And the really famous roguelikes are Angband and all its variants. Uh, Stone Soup is a pretty famous one. Um, of course, uh, Dwarf Fortress is a very famous one. And we will eventually get into that one. Uh, but it'll be a while, because that game is really in-depth. It's like the... It takes the traditional sense of roguelike, and you never win. You just get better. This roguelike, you can actually win. Uh, we're going to get this, and I'll explain all the items I'm picking up in a second. All the items are yellow, like that. Um, and if you see when monsters come up here on the left, over here, uh, they'll be, you know, patrolling, wandering, sleeping, um, until they say hunting, I believe they are unaware of me. Or fighting, maybe. Hunting and fighting are the only two where they're aware of me. Alright, now this is a, uh, locked door, so is this one at the end, and this is a statue. A cold marble statue has weathered the years with grace. 
and you can see past it, but you can't move past it, right? So, now I'm going to check my inventory, right? Because we can see on our, well, yeah, we can see on our map down here, this is a key, probably, which allows us into one of these doors, or it might be a pressure pad, yeah, pressure plate, which allows us into one of these doors, right? Um, and that's what we want. We want to get that. However, we need an item to get that because it is over a hole, which leads down to the next level. Let's kill this rat so that we're not bothered by it later. And I do believe that it's a finite amount of monsters. Oh no, the pressure plate opens this uh, cage in which there's a key. So we're going to go ahead and hit inventory, I for inventory. And this is our inventory. Equipped, we have a plus zero dagger and leather armor. Unequipped, we have some food. We have 15 plus zero darts, which are a throw and ranged weapon. We have a green potion, a white potion, a, and three scrolls. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce those names. A lot, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I mean, on this one, Greep, I can pronounce that. But uh, you learn things by doing them in this roguelike, as is typical of a lot of roguelikes. So you don't understand what the green potion is until you take a green potion. Then, when you find further green potions, you know what they are. And sometimes it doesn't work. Like, if you have a scroll, and you use it, but there's nothing around for it to affect, you still don't know what it was. So there's a learning curve uh, system built into the game. So we're going to try the scrolls, because the scrolls are less risky than the potions. So hit F, and then we're going to hit A for apply. Um, a surge of energy courses through your pack, but nothing happens. So you assume it must be a scroll of recharging. That's okay. So we wasted a scroll, but now we know what it is for future reference. We're going to try H and apply. Um, a protective golden light covers your dagger. It must have been a scroll of protect weapon. That is good. However, it would have been better if we had a different weapon. Um, it means that I am going to keep that dagger even when I get a better weapon for slimes, or no, for the acid mounds or something like that. Slimes, maybe? That do corrosive damage to your items. The protection spell helps that. So we're going to hit I and apply Scroll of Enchantment, which allows me uh, to enchant an item. We're going to enchant uh, Leather Armor. So now it shines in the darkness, and we now have plus one Leather Armor. So now each level has a way to get to the key. And since we've pulled all the items out of the levels, except for the ones behind the doors, we can assume that it's one of these potions. Hopefully neither of these potions kill us. So we're going to go with the white potion first, uh, and you can either throw potions or apply them. So thrown potions splash on the ground, and, you know, they're like acid. Corrosive, or a fire, or whatever. And drinking them is very bad. So we're going to try and drink it. Okay, it was a potion paste. Which is cool, um, which means that hopefully this this one is a potion of life. Why is is there a place we missed? Can't quite tell because there should be. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. But I thought when I used to play, uh, no, I don't want to dive to the depths, sorry. Uh, when I used to play, there was always an item on the level that helped you unlock the puzzle. And he might have hidden it. And there are such things as hidden rooms, so maybe we should search a bit. And later on when I'm playing this game, uh, it will go faster. Hello, Jackal? simply because I won't have to explain everything that I'm doing. 
Um, if there is another room, it's either going to be down here somewhere. So we're going to hit S for search repeatedly along this now. Okay. Uh, maybe up here somewhere. And I don't know how long the range is for the search command. Um, I guess it could be up here. But I think it spans, like, all the blocks touching you or something. Hmm. And maybe our search skill is just not enough to hack it. So I was hoping to show you some of the cooler stuff you can get, but we might not be able to do that. Kill the kobold. Hmm. Um, jackal. And I'm not sure if things respawn in the map, uh, or if they just kind of sneak around you. So let's let's take another look. We don't have anything that will help us get to that. Oops. No, no, no. Didn't mean to do that. Um, so I guess all that's left is to go down to the next level, unfortunately. Uh, so we are going to go over here to the stairs, and boom, we're on the next level. Cobalt, and I think for the first, like, three levels, you can really beat most things with the, uh, Okay, good. The monkey didn't steal anything. With the uh, dagger. But you want to change your weapon at least at level 3 or have some kind of buffed dagger. And great, it's flank. So we're going to go to inventory. We're going to hit C and we're going to hit T for throw. And we're going to uh, stab this thing with darts. Flying, flying darts. Right? And it stole our food, which is very important. Hopefully we can kill this monkey before it, yeah, steals anything. Okay. So, and this yellow stuff around here, I believe is combustible. It sets fire. Okay, that rat can wander off. Don't know what that was about. Oh, there's an eel. So yeah, the yellow stuff is like oil, and the blue stuff is, of course, water. But eels can sort of apparently swim in oil. Um, holding down, you need to be careful when holding down keys, and I cannot get through this way, can I? There is a difference between the shore of a water and the uh, deep water that you have to swim in, and if you swim in water that's too deep, you start losing items, they float away. Okay, yeah, here we go. There's another one of these, and I'm not sure, I forget which one that is, but it, you don't want items to, to float away. It's just bad time. Okay, so we got a nickel wand, which is often very nice to have. Killed that jackal, and we got 120 pieces of gold. Gold is basically, I think, used as a point system. Um, so now we have violet potion, blue potion, and a nickel wand. I'm going to wait. Actually, we can probably target the blood spawn. So let's see. G, um, apply, and this allows us to shoot it. Okay, that didn't really tell us anything, so it might be a friendly thing. And this is armor here, banded mail. Strength 15 required. We only have a strength of 2, which means we need some strength potions. And a warhammer, strength 20. And you can use weapons that are not suitable for your strength, but they uh, get penalties. And the penalties really make it not worth it. Okay, so we're going to go back up to level 1 and see if any of these things can help us. 
And the reason I don't just check down here and then if something will help us go up there is because the effects will wear off before we can get back all the way over there. So we want a levitate spell or telekinesis, I think, maybe one that would be good. Okay, so inventory. We are going to hit G and apply on ourselves. You ascend, which is a levitation. No. Oh, ho, ho, I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, so inventory. G. Um, apply. Let's see if we can't. Hmm. Never mind. I guess the U ascend what came up when I went up the stairs. Unfortunately. Um, so we don't know. Yeah, we don't know what the wand does. Okay, so F. Apply. Potion of strength. Cool, so our strength is now 13. Um, e. Apply. And great. So this pink stuff that just spawned is uh, purple gas, and it eats our flesh. And it's bad for us, so we're going to run out of it. Um, and it will eventually dissipate, but we're not going to worry about it right now because... And that's one of those bad potions. Um, but we're not going to worry about it because nothing we can do uh, will help us. So now we're just going to go right over to the... Um, stairs to go down further. Oops, just killed something. And you can see that our nutrition is going down. Um, when I get to the stairs, I'll eat something and show you how that works. But basically, if your nutrition goes all the way down, you start dying of hunger, which is never good. You know, you, you want to live, you don't want to die. All right, so inventory, um, A, apply. Oh, Okay, so we're not hungry enough to get the full effects of the food, so we're going to save it. I thought we were. Alright, so we have a rat here. Good. Um, looks like there's a couple... Titanium wand, ooh. So y you do get quite an arsenal in this game. But you have to know when to use it and when to just hoof it out of there kind of a thing okay so let's kill the monkey and this is a goblin i haven't read the goblins have i i don't think i've read the rats either okay so filthy little little primitive the tribalistic goblin often travels and packs and carries makeshift stone blade or a makeshift stone blade has 30 percent chance of hit typically hits for eight percent um current health and at best defeat me in eight turns and I have a 91 percent hit uh hit for 20 percent and at best could kill him in four turns so we're just going to stab him and notice that I killed him in two it said four but I killed him in two okay so weapons and armor often come up However, without a scroll of identify or a scroll of detect magic, you do not know if they are cursed or not. So changing a weapon without identifying it first, or at least detecting magic to know if it's good or not, uh, is a bad idea. So we have a new dagger, but we don't know if the dagger is better than our current dagger. Um, and we have two new wands. Now wands don't work like that, luckily. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to see what this does. Okay, so yeah, you kill a blood wart and it bursts into a cloud of uh, healing spores. That's nice. So there are a few of these around here in case I run into trouble. Alright, so let's see what else we got going on. Um, apparently there's a... Uh, black potion over there, and we can see a goblin. Um, burgundy potion. Okay. Let's check in here. This is just... Oh, I feel weak with hunger. Inventory. A. Apply. 
And now we have almost full nutrition. Okay, so we got the black potion. And that's how the food works. You just eat. And you can find food in the dungeon, because right now that's the only food we had. Okay, so we picked up another two potions, but we know what these potions are. Potion of Strength, Potion of Poison Gas. And we can use the Potion of Poison Gas um, offensively. Oh, I don't think I can get down there from this side, damn. Um, and it's good to use on, like, trolls and stuff. Trolls are big guys. Very bad, big guys. And here comes a kobold. Come here, kobold. There we go. An empty room. And, and I realize that this series might not be popular because it's kind of annoying to look at ASCII. Um, but it's, it's a sense of adventure, you know? You see what kind of cool instances you can get into, how, what it takes to kill you, different ways to die. Okay, so we have a couple of goblins here, so we're going to back off, right? Move this way. Ooh, okay. Goblin Mystic. This goblin carries no weapon, and its eyes sparkle with golden light. It can invoke a powerful shielding magic to protect its escorts from harm. 30% um, chance to hit, 7% damage, uh, 10 turns, or 10 hits, 90% chance to hit, 30% of its current health, and 3 hits. Mystic can cast protection and keep its distance. Alright, so this is what we're going to do, right? Inventory, and remember that potion of gas? Apply. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We didn't want to apply. We want uh, to throw. And we don't want to throw it at him. We want to throw it at him, right? So now all of them are in this poisonous gas. And I have now got a choke point in which to fight them. Okay. Here's a pink jelly. Now, jellies split, and I really hate them. <laughs> That's just uh, just what I hate. Pink jellies. Okay, so we're going to try our wands on this guy, right? Apply. Bolt of Domination. He resisted it, though. Okay, Bolt of Domination basically is like a mind control thing. Alright, we haven't tried the brass one yet, so let's try that. I'm thinking that's a teleport. Yeah. Oops, no, no, no. Because it just disappeared. Interesting. Alright, so here's some armor. Scale mail. Um, it's only strength 12, so we could wear it, however, it's probably not a good idea to put it on yet. Okay, so we have a goblin and a kobold. I can take these guys on, I think. My dagger. Oh boy, here comes jellies. Or no, they're all jackals. And they're hunting. And I'm stuck. Darn it, there's... Okay, we got out. Um, there was an eel under the water. And it was making it so that we couldn't move. Okay. And I'm moving slowly here so that I can watch to see if this guy wakes up. And... Oh! Something hits you. Maybe the jelly was, uh... Maybe that was a wand of invisibility, and I turned the jelly invisible instead of killing it. So we died. Uh, yeah, killed by a pink jelly on level 4, so I guess that was a s wand of invisibility. And that's, that's the interesting part of this game, is it's always kind of weird how you die. And we are going to go through one more playthrough in this recording, this episode. Uh, new game. Uh, we got us a tan potion right off the bat and some money. And we got a jackal here. 
And this is kind of the rate that I usually play at. And this, I do, I have played this game quite a bit. It is a nice game. It's really well fleshed out. There aren't a lot of, I'm, I don't, I haven't come across any glitches or anything. Um, at least not that I know to be glitches. I kind of wish we could find a little loot room to show you guys, because a lot of the loot in those rooms is really nice. We got an axe. Um, jackal, rat. Actually, let's heal, let's look at the rat. The rat is a scavenger of the shallows, uh, perpetually in search of decaying animal matter. 50% chance to hit me, 6% and 10 hits, 100%, 50% and 2 hits. So yeah, it's not that difficult of a thing to beat. Jackals are uh, also not difficult. Pretty much everything on the first two levels is not difficult. Third level or fourth level, that's when it starts getting difficult. And in the older version of this game, I've actually made it to the... T um, I think it was like almost the 20th level, like 18th or something. And that's as far as I got. But it gets pretty hectic the further you go. Alright, so. There's no loot rooms in this level, unfortunately. So we're just going to go straight into the next one without checking any of our stuff. Because at the moment, we don't need it. Okay. So let's check up here first. Alright. And we got us a, an axe, war axe, and nope. How do I get across this? Ah, right here. All of the yellow stuff is uh, shallow enough for you to walk in, I believe. However, the red stuff, which is lava, is never safe to walk in, even if it's shallow. So, in fact, I don't even think they delineate the difference between shallow and not. Ah, damn it, there's a, an eel in the way. Okay. And it is one of these games where if you hold down a key, um, it perpetually updates. Okay, there's definitely a secret door there. See, I was just holding down a key, and look at how much damage was done to me. Um... In fact, whoops, no, no, no. Uh, isn't there, yeah, there's one up there, but I don't really want to... There's got to be a room there. Okay, let's uh, try and not... Actually, let's uh, go ahead and sleep a bit. Dang. And I'm kind of tapping it rapidly instead of holding it down. Hoping that I can stop myself if something shows up. Uh, but that is kind of a risk. Holding down keys makes it so that things can just attack you repeatedly really fast and before you can light up on the key. Um, okay, I think we're good enough. You do inherently gain life as you go on. Oh, here's a healing spore. I feel much better. Okay. So maybe this will... Okay, that's a bloat. Let's read one of these. We saw one before, but I didn't read it. Bladder of deadly gas. Uh, buys... Bows the bloat? I don't know what that word is. Uh, the bloat through the air. It's thin, venomous membrane ready to rupture at the slightest stress. It deals no direct damage. Has a hundred percent chance, or I have a hundred percent chance to hit seventy-five percent of its life, and could defeat it in one hit. The bloat dies when attacked. Flies moves erratically. There are other kinds of bloats, um, like pit bloat, which basically opens up the ground. It's kind of nasty, but this one is sleeping, thankfully, so we're just gonna leave it be. Um, 
Let's see, what is this? Burgundy potion, jackal, and more cave to explore. And nothing of interest, unfortunately. So we've collected quite a bit of stuff now, so we'll probably, on level 3, run into a chance to use it. Now this is definitely a hallway. And I was holding down S, which is search, to find the door. So we found this door, which is apparently a secret door. And some secret doors are mandatory to find, and others are not. Alright, so we killed the goblin. Killed the kobold. Alright, so we have a goblin conjurer. Goblin is covered with glowing sig uh, sigils that pulse with power. I don't, I don't know what the word is. Um, I'm just graphic, so yeah. Uh, it can call into existence phantom blades to attack its foes. They, these guys suck, right? So it can attack, and it conjures like four phantom blades to attack you. Luckily, though, it's sleeping. So, what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to go back into this room, right? And deal with this jackal. Okay, good, it's still sleeping. And we're going to take H, um, apply, and great. So we've basically just died here. Because the flask explodes in flame, you catch on fire, everything's on fire, we can run to the left. Um, so now our screen is red because we're on fire. We're running to the left, and we run out... Okay, we're no longer on fire, and we kind of have to wait it out. Um, inventory... Uh, yeah. We also have two puce potions, but I don't really... Okay. So these little ones here are little flames that don't set you on fire, but the pyramid ones are big flames. So now we have this potion of incineration. We can throw it at him. And bam, he's on fire. Right? And he summons these things, and they will come after us until he dies. Hopefully he dies when he's on fire. Now, those little guys aren't that hard to kill, but, and I'm down to 10% of my health, uh, they do, do deal some serious damage. So let's, uh, hopefully nothing comes by, and hopefully the fire's decayed. Good. Alright, so we have a regular goblin that's just wandering. It's fine. We have another dagger. And we have... Okay, now we have three of these scrolls, right? So now's the time to just try one. Scroll of Enchantment. Excellent. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's just go ahead and give it to the Chainmail, right? Um, and in enchanting something gives it less of a penalty if it's cursed. So like a cursed item will be cursed so that you can't remove it and it has like a minus three or something and enchanting it makes the minus move up to like minus two. And I'm gonna open a soda here so you might hear that. Um, the, and, but you still can't remove it until you get to a plus zero. So that's kind of the system they're using, I suppose. Um, and it says that your chainmail shines with an inner darkness, which means to me that it is still cursed, right? However, enchanting something lowers the strength required to use it. So now we can use that chainmail because it's no longer 13, it's 12, right? And we have more scrolls of enchanting to enchant it further. So we can hit N for chainmail. Still shining with an inner darkness, huh? Well, let's go ahead and put it on, right? Equip. Now wearing chainmail. 
and we're going to save that last scroll of enchanting for something else. Um, we also have two puce potions, and this is risky because our health is low, but we're going to apply. We have a potion of levitation. Awesome. So you can see the levitating bar there. Oh god, it's a bloat. It's a bloat. It's a bloat. No, run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Go away. <clears throat> Let's just go down here. It's hunting us. Okay. Inventory. C. Throw. We're making it explode over that. Okay. So we're going to go down here. There's another bloat. I wonder. Okay, so we made it explode. But the stuff won't go through the door. Um, it won't spread through the door unless the door is open. So I'm not going to open this door for a little... Well, I'll open the door to show you. Ah, uh, Vast just popped up. Really? Go away, Vast. I don't, I don't want you. So we open the door, and there's pink stuff in there. And we close it, or go back out of it, and it closes. And so only a little bit gets through. So we've kind of contained that bloats, poisons until it dissipates. And it's still not dissipated, darn. And we are no longer levitating, but we have another potion of levitation. Okay. Uh, what is it, C? Really? I had more darts? He must have stolen a dart. Okay. Another white potion. Well, not another white potion, the same white potion. Or the, a new white potion. Not the same white potion. Two white potions, okay. And healing spores, healing us. Yes, yes, yes. We feel much better. It is nice that they put that in the game. It's a cool aspect, I guess. Um, and I, I guess while I'm playing through here, because I've kind of explained things, uh, what's going on, so you can follow along. You know what's going on. You know what's happening, man. Uh, we're going to go down here. I'll explain why I'm doing Remy's roguelike rampage. It's because I'm kind of toying with the idea of... Because roguelikes aren't that hard to code. And I do understand coding. I just don't really know any coding languages. Uh, that seems like there's something there. No? Okay. Alright, so there's apparently an area with a key. But I, I do understand coding languages, so... And this thing is trapped. Uh, so... I'm kind of toying with the idea of designing a roguelike, just to kind of say, hey, I made a game. Um, and I feel like playing a bunch of different roguelikes will give me a good basis for how I want to go about it. But if I were to design a la, 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 if I were to design a roguelike, it would not be an ASCII roguelike. I would want to make graphics for it. It would still be pixelated and you know kind of old school gamer, but it wouldn't be ASCII. So as soon as we get this key, right, and it's red, which means we can get it. But as soon as we get this key, a trap's going to go off. It's probably going to be a pitfall, or these this little bush stuff is going to set on fire, right? Something, or it's going to start flooding. So let's see. Yep, nearby pond begins to flood the area. Oh, we got two going. Let's see if we can make it out. Oh wait, no, 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 not zero. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't flood too much. Now let's take a look at our choices. We got leather armor, 10. Staff of poison, question mark charges out of three. Another leather, leather armor. Wand of plenty. And Staff of Obstruction. Hmm. So, staffs have charges, they recharge, and enchanting them makes their total charges more, right? So, if I, if I got the Staff of Obstruction and I enchanted it, it would have three total charges, and it would recharge over time. Um, and you can also get scrolls of recharge and wands of recharge. Uh, so... Staff of Poison is looking tempting. Staff of Obstruction I don't really want. The Wand of Plenty is only good if you have an ally. Because Wand of Plenty pretty much multiplies things. Let me take a drink here. 
So, say you have a monkey, like we got in the first one, and you use the staff, or the wand of plenty on it, it would, I'm not sure how many it makes, but actually it might say, uh, the creature at the other end of this mischievous bit of metal will be beside itself, literally. Okay, so it only makes one clone. Cloning an enemy is ill advised, but the effects can be invaluable on a powerful ally. And you can get some pretty dang powerful allies in this. You have not yet used this wand. Wands of this type can be found with one, two charges. Enchanting this wand will add one charge. So let's see. Staff of Obstruction. A mass of impenetrable green crystal will spring forth from the... Uh, the point at which the staff is aimed, obstructing any who wish to move through. The effects, the affected area will temporarily be entombing anyone who are already there. The crystal will dissolve into thin air as time passes. Higher level staffs will create longer obstructions. The staff of obstruction has a maximum of two charges. It is, uh, and like all staffs, recover its charges gradually, gradually over time. Yada yada yada. Uh, this staff recharges half as quickly as most other kinds of stabs. Staff of Poison. The vile blast of this twisted bit of wood will imbue its target uh, with a deadly venom. A creature that is poisoned will suffer one point of damage per turn and will not regenerate lost health until the effect ends. The duration of the effect increases exponentially, um, with the level of the staff, and the level 10 staff can f fell even a deadly dragon with a single use. Eventually. <laughs> I like that. Eventually. Um, so notice it's not creating a cloud, at least I don't think it does, which is good for us. It's affecting the target, not making a burst of cloud like the bloats and potions. Uh, the bolt from the staff will poison any creature that has that it hits for seven turns. If the staff is enchanted, this will increase to eleven turns. Oh, nice! Um, it has three charges and recovers its charges over time. So I'm thinking this one. We want to get this one, which is no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. So it's this guy right here. And as soon as we get this and pull off, all the others lock. Which means we can't get any other item. We can only pick one. There can only be one! So, that's basically how that works. Um, and it is nice that we got a staff now. Staves are very powerful weapons. Wands are very powerful weapons. Rings are very powerful utilities. Um, and I'm not sure you might be able to get necklaces and stuff too. Oh boy. Goblin Conjurer. Wow, we killed him in one hit, and a jelly. So, inventory. We are using the uh, staff, right? Apply on the jelly, uh, which means that it's not going to split, because only physical damage splits jellies. And hopefully we don't run into anything else really bad. Okay, so now we can go ahead and hit it again. Hopefully we don't... Well, we're not going to be able to kill it without it running out of... Uh, before it runs out of life. Um, actually getting cornered by jellies is one of the best ways to attack them, as long as there's nothing else around. Because jellies split, and when they split, they can actually split behind you and trap you on, even in all four directions, so that you're getting hit four times a turn, and you can only hit one of them. But if you're up against a corner, they can only split behind themselves, so you're taking on one at a time. Um, and we have, hopefully, this last one is actually there, yes. So we've poisoned it quite a bit, and actually we can, uh, we could escape if we needed to, but I kind of want to take this guy on. Um, so we're gonna just wait here, see how it, there's another one behind it now, there's another one behind that, another one behind that, okay. So jelly split only once. Each jelly will split only once, but the one that splits off of it can be split again. I believe that's how it works. Don't quote me on that, though. Okay, now this... A toad. We gotta look at the toad. 
the enormous warty toad uh, Oh, secretes. That's... I was like, what? Secrets? No. Secretes. A powerful hallucinogenic slime to befuddle at the senses of any creature that comes in contact with it. So as soon as we attack this thing, we will definitely learn about other creatures in the game, because we'll hallucinate it. Um, it's nice. And look, you get tooltips about your stabs and stuff. Um... Will poison the toad for 30% chance, or 30%, 38% of its total health, current health. Okay, so let's try and attract this toad. Oh, you feel weak with hunger. Okay, inventory. Um, A, apply, eat the food. Okay. Um, spectral sword. Oh, they don't let you look at them? Darn. Okay, so we can't look at them. Apparently me moving my mouse makes it freak out. Uh, but each attack... Oh no, they move over time. So you basically... Explosive bat. Centipede. Centipedes are nasty. Um, explosive bloat. Eel. Goblin warlord. Pink jelly. Ogre. Ogres you can get as friends. And they are very good. Um, I think that happens at level 5. We're on 5 or 6. We're on 4 currently. Phantom. Yeah, I don't like phantoms. Uh -huh. Okay, so this red stuff here is a bridge. And bridges can be burned down. And we're still hallucinating. Uh, your pack is too full to pick up the leather armor. Man. Okay, let's just move in. Alright, inventory. Let's try M. Apply. Potion of Strength. Okay, let's just drink both of those right now. Uh, that was M. Alright, so we have Potion of Strength. We have White Potions, so apply that. Potion of Telepathy. Potions of Telepathy allow you to know and see around all living things on the map. So we have a monkey, we have a goblin, we have rats, we have another toad. Um, so yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Man. Okay. Um, actually, can I move it down here? Yeah. So that only lasts for a certain time. But you can also get a... I think it's like a ring of telepathy, and it allows you to see around walls, on the other side of walls and stuff. Uh, so you can really tell when uh, there's a, a secret door with that thing. Okay, so let's see, should we try some scrolls? Let's try some scrolls. Apply. Okay, scroll of magic mapping. Now, I like how they did this, because they didn't just display the map. They displayed the map that you haven't seen different than the map that you have which is nice. This also shows secret doors. Um, yeah, so you know that's a good, it's a good thing to have. Uh, apply that one. Remove curse. Malevolent energy disappears from my pack, which is nice, which means something that was cursed is now gone. Um, P, we can try P. Oh boy. Scroll of Summon Monsters. Pink jelly drenches you? I don't get... Oh god, okay. Inventory. Let's see, let's see here. Um, man, we really don't have anything to fight these guys with. So let's run. Right? Actually, no, 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 no. Let's, uh... Okay, so we have a potion of... Can we get away in time, though? That's the question. Right? Okay, inventory. Um, where was it? O. Apply. And now we can just run across this. And the daggers will follow us, right? But you won't hit the daggers. Sure, he summons more, but, you know... And let's just sit here healing for a bit. 
Kill me more. Huzzah. Okay. So that's how we got away from that, which is nice. Let's try another scroll. Uh, our last scroll that we haven't tried, apply. Awesome! We got protected armor, which protects it from corrosion. Let's go kill this monkey. Die, monkey. Darn it, we're going to be hallucinating again. Okay, now, monsters don't actually um, go between levels. Which means if I really need to, I can just run down to the level below us. And I know I'm leaving that leather armor up there. I don't want it. But what I do want is actually this food here. It's nice. Food. Okay. So there's not really anything interesting here. Well, actually there might be, because I haven't checked these rooms down here. Let's try and kill this guy. Yes, good. Kill the monkey. Kill the monkey. Oh. Inventory. C... Uh, T, hit. Awesome. Okay, so we stole our green potion, apparently. Alright, so let's, uh... You are... Preternatural mental senses fade. Alright, so we're in depth 5 now, which I think is the furthest we've made it. And we're in a room with no doors, which means we have to search... Oh, there it is. Didn't even have to search. Uh, that does happen from time to time. Oh, and we hit a... Uh, man, we got hit by a lightning bolt. That's a lightning bolt trap right there. This thing right here is a poison gas trap. And um, apparently... Yep. Okay. Let's take a look at the goblin totem. Goblins have created this makeshift totem and imbued it with a shamanistic power. I'm not sure if shamanistic is a word, but we'll go with it. The goblin totem deals no direct damage. You have a 100% chance to hit, 10% chance, 10% uh, of life, 8 hits. Um, my poison staff will not affect it. What happens is the goblin totem actually casts spells at you. It channels magic, right? So we're going to hide from it for a little bit. Make sure it can't see us. Alright. Actually, I wonder if I can get... What's its... Okay, that's where its range is. Can it hit me from there? No. So let's... Take a snap at that. Apply. No, no, no. There we go. That's the one. Alright, so we got... Oh, he... Man, it can hit us for good. So we got one... Oh, damn, jackals. And we're probably going to die because my hand was on the sleep key. Okay. Ooh, there's a pit bloat. Man, if I could hit that from here, that would be awesome. When it's close to the goblins. Oh, there's a toad coming. Okay. Um, man. I'm trying to think. Let's hit, let's hit the toad with some poison. And the goblin is hasted. Okay. All right, all right. Let's uh, stay here for a little bit to sleep. And this is where the game gets difficult. And this, yeah, this is where the game gets fun, too. Um, let's kill the toad. We're not hallucinating. Ah, damn, right as I came out. Okay, let's go up this way a bit. And there's that bloat. Okay, so this is a pit bloat. We'll read it. This rare species of bloat is filled with a particular vapor that, if released, will cause the floor to vanish from it. Or, from underneath it. So, yeah. Not cool. Um, and we want to stay away and hit it from afar. So we will uh, see, throw, and hit it with that. And those, they, it does fill in, because the vapor does dissipate, right? And for some reason, there's a lot of ja Oh, I died. I forgot to check my health. My bad. So, killed by a jackal on level 5. But, we found some interesting things. 
So I'm going to leave it off here. We will probably revisit Brogue because it is one of my favorites. Um, next time, I believe we will either be doing Stone Soup or Powder. And I'm thinking Powder because Powder has a graphical interface that Stone Soup doesn't. It's not Powder isn't ASCII. Um, but Powder is quite difficult. However, you can fluke it, and I have beaten Powder, or is Powder one that you can beat? I know that I've gotten to, like, the goal, whatever my goal was in Powder, which I think was, like, I don't know, I have to look at the records, because it's all saved. Ah, uh, but that's on my other computer. But I've gotten pretty dang far in it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Powder or Stone Soup. And uh, this has been Remy, Remy the Phoenix, the fake Phoenix. This has been my rampage into roguelikes. And I will see you guys next time.